Bo, thank you for joining us at BrainMind and for being such a leader and early supporter of the event oh, and my the pleasure. whole ecosystem. Um, I'm interested in uh, your journey to, to this deep interest in brain science. Um, you, I know you started your career in software. Um, how did that interest in brain science develop? My interest primarily actually came from a uh, personal and emotional journey rather than an intellectual journey. Internationally, I was always been interested in how the brain works, but that interest would not have it wasn't as deep as my emotional and personal one. So my personal uh, ex experience has been that um, despite all the sort of external achievements and success and fame and power and wealth that, uh, that I have had, um, that I found that my internal state of well-being wasn't very high, that I wasn't very happy or satisfied or joyful or, I didn't feel particularly alive. Um, so I, about 10 years ago, I started a journey of exploration of what is really going on inside of me. Right? Uh, who am I? Why I'm here? All those sort of age old questions. And of course, to answer those questions, one has to directly explore and experience with our own consciousness. But, but to make that exploration sort of to make sense of that exploration, also to make that exploration perhaps more available to other people and maybe easily accessible by other people, which I think is one of the things I like to do, that understanding of our brain, our mind, I think forms this foundation. It's a little deeper with you. I, I have a lot of entrepreneur friends who've gotten into mindfulness practices and they go to retreats and learn how to um, become more present in their day-to-day -day life and, and commit to things like conscious leadership. What is it that drives you to look deeper and to understand, to not just have an experience of mindfulness, but to seek to understand what's the neuro activity beneath mindfulness? Just like in sort of physical sciences, other kinds of physical sciences, there's the fundamental research and there's the applied research, right? And ultimately there's actually the application. So, the way I think about it is studying of the brain and the mind is the basic research that might not lead to any specific application right away, but that's the foundation of all the applications in the future, really. Then we have sort of the applied research, right? In fact, I would, I would say that, say, people like John Kabat-Zinn with the MBSR was taking a brain applied research, you know, you know of combining traditional Buddhist practices with neurobiology and understanding how that affects our, our neurobiology in terms of stress response, etc. So that has been super, super helpful. Right. And, then, and then mindfulness left the lab and entered the mainstream. And for me, actually mindfulness perhaps is only a small part of a person's journey. I think it's a critical and uh, necessary part. But I think as we go deeper into our own consciousness and our own truth, I think one would discover that um, there's a lot of mysteries there that's beyond mindfulness. Um, and, uh, and to understand these mysteries, I think one first of all has to go in, you know, directly experience it, because sometimes talking about it, intellectualizing it doesn't really help you. One going deep into these mysteries through meditation, other types of deep personal practices. But then those mysteries invariably invite the question, at least for people like me, it's like, hmm, what's really going on here, right? When we experience those mysteries of these uh, one with all, of some of the so-called spiritual experiences, though I'm not a religious person, but sometimes hard to describe those experiences other than using mystery as a word. I was like, hmm, then what's the mystery actually going on you know, physically? Because there is some kind of correlation between what happens in our brain and the mind and our subjective experience. So building that bridge between subjective experience and the objective measurements mm. is, is the hard problem of consciousness. I think that's, that's uh, I think one of the philosophers, I think, mm. defined that as the hard problem of consciousness. And I want to, I want to come on to why um, brain mind, this brain-mind event in particular is so good at bridging that, that divide. 
Um, but first, since you raised consciousness, what, what is consciousness to you? How would you define it? That's a hard one. <laughs> um, at a simple level, consciousness simply is a sense of being aware. Most of us, however, do not experience really a sense of awareness other than through thinking. We actually identify thinking with awareness. And I think, and we sort of get almost hijacked by our thinking. Um, and we're constantly churning our minds. And um, I think it's actually possible to experience pure awareness without thinking. Now you're sort of wondering, huh, what's that awareness? What's, who has experienced that awareness? What's the nature of that? Uh, and that where a lot of the Eastern um, spiritual practices is very much focused on. Uh, and, and then the awareness in, in some ways is the mystery. One can get into potentially transpersonal realms because one finds that my awareness fundamentally is actually very similar to yours. Uh, there is a there is a uh, there's an analogy of drops in the ocean that we all drops in the same ocean compose exactly the same thing. For you, consciousness is sort of that awareness that's there mm -hmm. even when you're not thinking. That is right. Well, it's beneath the thinking. Yes. Yeah. You get invited to speak at a lot of conferences and I'm sure supported a lot of other conferences. What makes Brain Mind different to you? What makes this worth your time and energy? I actually don't support too many conferences. <laughs> Brain, Mind, Brain Mind is the exception rather than the rule. I think there are probably two reasons if I were to sum, sum it up. One is that I think um, the study of ourselves, the internal world, is, has been underinvested in for many years now. Right. We understand so much about the history of the universe, 13.8 billion years plus minus 20 million years, etc., that we actually don't even know how our memory works. Right? Simple things like that. We actually don't even understand the basic building blocks of our consciousness and awareness. Right? So that's long overdue because, as I think sometimes talk about, is our mental health crisis, for example, of one out of six people in America, adults in America, be on some kind of psychiatric medication is um, it's pretty incredible. Uh, below the age of 55, suicide is the third largest cause of death. Third. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's shocking, right? Um, so, um, so understanding ourselves is really overdue, but we've got to do that. And you mentioned in your talk that um, that doesn't even take account of the attempted suicide. Yeah, attempted suicide is 1.3 million a year. So that's, you know, if everybody who attempted had been successful, then 1.3 million deaths will make suicide by far the leading cause of deaths in America. Uh, you know, more than cancer and cardiovascular uh, causes added together. So it's a uh, burning so, priority. Right, so that's a huge thing, right? And, um, and the second reason I think I, I made the exception of supporting uh, this conference is because of the two founders, Michael and Laura. Right. Uh, because what I found in both of them is not just incredible you know, intellectual curiosity and capacity for execution, of course, all those things, but both of them are incredibly compassionate people. Right. Um, and uh, Laura is one of my favorite scientists, and she's just so, she's so warm and open and compassionate. And Michael, of course, has deep personal practices as well, and he has been on the journey. And, um, he also thinks very deeply about what will, will make the world better, not just through intellectual means, you know, because you can imagine that the more we understand about ourselves, how we work, then commercial interests can take those knowledge and manipulate us for their own ends.